Yeah, very surreal, um, overwhelming. And, you know, naturally, UCLA was going to do a national search, uh, which they did. So, you know, it really was in a difficult situation uh, with Coach Herrick, you know, being dismissed. Uh, they go with the longest tenured assistant to be the interim coach. And I had been there for five seasons and a part of the national championship staff and the success that coach Herrick had. And at that point I also was the recruiting coordinator. And so uh, Pete Dallas and chancellor young, you know, asked me to step in as the interim coach. And they said, it could be a couple of weeks. It could be a month. Uh, we don't know when we're going to, you know, uh, find a permanent coach. And um, so, you know, it started tough. Uh, we lost to Tulsa, uh, in the NIT opener uh, at Poly Pavilion. Oh. And that was disappointing, uh, naturally. It was like an overtime game. And uh, it was all surreal because it's your first time, you know, at a press conference. Uh, it's your first practice leading a team as a head coach. It's your first exhibition game. And then it's your first, you know, non-conference game uh, against Tulsa in this case. Uh, and then the next thing you know, you're going against Lon Kruger at Illinois and Roy Williams, in Kansas, and Charlie Spoonhauer, St. Louis, Man. Denny Crum at Louisville, and um, Coach K, uh, the Duke Blue Devils, uh, who was one of those coaches I'd been writing to in college. And then all of a sudden you're facing him at Poly Pavilion, a sellout crowd with uh, Dick Vitale, and uh, I think Brett Musburger calling the game for ABC. So, you know, those were surreal kind of pinch me um, and my dreaming moments and uh, coach Wooden, of course, behind the bench. And that was uh, the reason I ended up, you know, having the interim tag lifted was, you know, my advocate was, was John Wooden. And that goes back to the relationship at Purdue and those years, pick him up at the airport, drive him to his hotel and bring him over to the arena for practice, get them to the events that he was speaking at. Uh, so you just never know. Um, and so his advocacy behind the scenes was really important. Uh, he's not someone publicly that advocates, but having the nod, uh, the approval of uh, John Wooden was really important. And Chancellor Young well, I... <laughs> had, yeah, Ch Chancellor Young had been a young president at UCLA uh, towards the end of John Wooden's run. John Wooden retired in 1975. And and Chuck Young was there in the early 70s as a young chancellor. And Pete Dallas, the athletic director, uh, was, you know, in school as a football manager um, when Coach Wooden was at UCLA back in the day. Coach Wooden was hired in 1948. He retired in 1975, so a 27-year run uh, with the Bruins. And Jim Millhorn, who was the number two athletic director, had played for Coach Wooden. Uh, Pete Blackman, the vice chancellor of the school, had also played for Coach Wooden. So uh, if if Coach Wooden doesn't advocate for me, then, you know, probably John Calipari or Rick Majerus or Tubby Smith or, you know, some of the other coaches um, that UCLA had interest in would have been hired. Oh, wow. um, so, uh, again, back to just destiny and fate and uh, the kind of fragile nature, uh, whether it's Tyus making that shot or missing it and how everything moving forward would be different. And if I hadn't started my career at Purdue and met coach Wooden, um, and then along with meeting Mark Gottfried and coach Herrick, these other aspects, of course, uh, that come into play, but to all those things, you know, play a part in leading to today and us sitting down here and my work as a broadcaster, at ABC, SPN, and now Fox sports and, and, uh, Turner and CBS during the NCAA tournament, um, they're, you know, all transitions, but they're connected uh, to these things that go back to writing letters to coaches uh, as a sophomore in college. And uh, that's why when I, you know, work with young people or, you know, speak to uh, high school students or to college students uh, about, you know, their interest in certain careers, um, you know, I always go back to the relationships you build and the authenticity and sincerity of those relationships. Um, it's not networking because I think people say, oh, so it's about networking. You go to a job fair. And I'd say 
No, it's about the genuine, sincere, um, you know, nature of the relationships that you build. And if you're interested in learning and you're earnest about learning, um, that's when magical things start to happen because you're increasing your knowledge base and you're meeting people with life experience. And uh, I've been fortunate that I've always had older people that I connected well with, uh, whether it was Brent Musburger in television, um, Coach Katie, Coach Wooden, um, Coach Herrick, uh, Pete Newell, you know, uh, those coaches that took time to write letters back like Bob Knight, Mike Krzyzewski. And so both in television and in coaching, it was the uh, knowledge that, you know, older people with life experience shared and their willingness to spend time and to see some potential in a young person and uh, encourage them. So that's a big element too, that I think, you know, we have to remember sometimes we need encouragement, you know, from coaches and mentors and teachers and our parents and our friends, because we may not have the courage ourselves. And that's what encouragement is about is providing courage when maybe someone doesn't have it, giving them that nudge, a little motivation, inspiration uh, to uh, encourage them on the path or, maybe to help redirect them because you can see more clearly than they can themselves uh, the gifts that they have and possess and where they might be better suited going in a different direction, a different field. And um, so that kind of, you know, comes back to some of these other themes that we've been uh, talking about today.